All right, hello class. Welcome back. Uh, after going through our first week, I recognize that many students uh, did not understand the difference between a primary and a secondary source. Uh, so I'm putting together this video as a way of explaining the difference, talking about the, the reasons why historians rely so heavily on primary sources. So when I was an undergraduate student, my professor, uh, my history professor, explained primary sources this way. He had us imagine uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes and said, you know, when Sherlock Holmes is investigating a murder case, he is looking for clues. He's looking for clues to determine who the guilty party is. Um, he could listen to what other people had to say, um, but many people are just speaking from hearsay. You know, this, is, this is what I heard. This is where I was. This is what the rumors have it. Um, but Holmes is looking for fingerprints. He's looking for blood patterns or whatever blood sp splatter patterns. Uh, and he's looking for essentially primary clues, um, right? The, the exact evidence. Uh, and similarly, maybe, maybe that's similar to the way that historians use primary sources um, as a way of understanding the past. Uh, there are, uh, in the field of history, we classify sources as in, in two types. There are primary and secondary sources. Primary sources are, are documents, speeches, letters, um, uh, even video footage that took place at the time being investigated. So in, the, in chapter one, uh, when we were reading about the New World, the Journal of Christopher Columbus, right here, is most definitely a primary source. This is a, a, something that Christopher Columbus himself wrote down in 1492 as he was initially uh, exploring the New World. Um, so these four sources are all considered primary sources. These are original and are eyewitness accounts of what life was like, experiences had during that period many, many, many years ago. Secondary sources then um, are works done by people like the textbook that summarize events that it took place in the past. So most books are secondary sources. Um, most history books are classified as secondary sources. So for instance, a really popular movie a few years ago was the movie Unbroken, which was written by a pseudo-historian who researched the background of this um, guy who was captured during World War II, was held as a hostage in a Japanese prison. He was a, an Olympic runner, right? And so this, this historian went through primary sources. He went through this guy's letters. He went through his journals, his diaries, uh, went through newspapers from that era. And from that was able to recreate um, this guy's life, uh, his experiences, the secondary source is the book that this uh, that she wrote called Unbroken. That is a secondary source. Your textbook is a secondary source. It summarizes, uh, makes observations about, establishes arguments about uh, things like the past, relying upon primary sources. Uh, in the world of history, we would like our students to focus on primary sources. Primary sources are where the true work of a historian takes place as we are interpreting the past, as we're understanding things like motives, understanding biases. Uh, we don't want to read it from somebody else um, for fear that they might have missed something or they had personal bias. They had an agenda that they wanted to sell books and so they told a story in such a way as to perhaps shortchange one side of this uh, one account uh, to look more heroically at a different account. And so as a historian, we would like to make our own decisions based off of the evidence. So for that reason, this class will be looking at both primary and secondary sources. I'm encouraging you to start with a secondary source because a secondary source does a great job of summarizing, in, in this case, previous past events. So it can give you a, a, a general understanding of what happened and when, but when we pull back the layers, set aside the secondary text and instead look at the writing, the work of the people who were alive at that time and decide for ourselves what was the past like. You'll find that it's far more complicated and far more nuanced than a textbook would allow. If you feel that a textbook reading is boring, I'm with you. Um, 
It is boring. It's hard to make the past come alive reading a textbook. I encourage you to really focus then on your primary source readings. Try to get into the mind of the, of the author, understand the setting and the historical context, pose questions, try to understand why, uh, why the individual, in this case perhaps Christopher Columbus, why he thought the way that he did, uh, what was he seeing and how did he respond, and how did those responses um, change or shape uh, the way other people at that time acted, and how does that then determine how we think about the past? Uh, I was going to play this awesome song for you. It's <laughs> But one source is more reliable, and that's the one you should choose. Let's hear it for primary. Yeah, we're not going to do that. All right, so that's a quick brief primer on primary secondary sources. The textbook is a secondary source. All right, thank you guys. Hope that was helpful.